afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, once again. It's my privilege to introduce to you today's guest speaker. Uh, he's a member of the National Assembly of Pakistan. He is one of the most prominent political leaders of the Balochistan province. He is the chairman of the Pashtun Khwamili Army Party. He has been elected to the National Assembly of Pakistan four times uh, from 1996 onwards. He has been a part of every National Assembly of Pakistan except the 2008, which uh, the elections under General Musharraf, which were boycotted by the Pashtun Khwamili Awami Party. Over the past three decades, he has been in the forefront of the struggle for the, for the rights of ethno-linguistic minorities in Pakistan. He is an ardent advocate of a strong, democratic and federal Pakistan. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Mahmood Khan Achakzai. Pakistan came into being on 14th August 1947 and was carved out of the British subcontinent with the motherlands of five people, five different people who spoke different languages, who had their own cultures, their own traditions, the Bengalis, the Sindhis, the Pashtuns, the Punjabis, the Baluch, the Saraikis, they had their own motherlands in centuries. Of them all, Pashtuns made a lot of sacrifices for their motherland, for against the British Empire, then again when Pakistan came into being against every dictatorial regime. My canvas is quite, quite this, the time is very short. I have to defend Pashtuns first, then Islam, then Pakistan, and then myself. <laughs> Pashtuns. Pashtuns, they are anonymously used at Afghans, Pashtun, the same thing. Pashtuns had been the motivating force of the Afghan history. From Oxus to Indus, this land is theirs. From Herodotus, the historic history person of Alexander the Great, to Tyne B, the modern historian. No person has ever written in any book that the Pashtuns or the Afghans, they had ever been sectarians. They had ever been terrorists. You can go through dozens of hundreds of books are written by British Empire. Pashtuns were the contenders, but they didn't blame them to be terrorists. Didn't blame them to be sectarians. Now, a sort of propaganda is going on that Pashtuns were dangerous people. They just shave their head, have their beard, no moustaches. They are preaching Islam, and they just kill people. It's the wrong picture of the people. You can go through any book written by our own contenders, by British invaders. Alexander Burns, Tetler, so many authors, any, any, anyone you pick up, nobody will say, yes, we had been the target of terror, the target of invaders. Even before Christ, the first invasion of our land, the first terrorism done with us was by Alexander the Great. He came by our land, and then everybody who wanted to come to India had to pass through our land, be it Chinggis Khan, be it the Arabs, be Lizan the Great, be from the southern side, our English friends. So this, each and every Pashtun, whoever he is, whether he belongs to a rightist party, whether he belongs to a leftist party, whether he is a practical, practicing Muslim or not, this is their prime duty to erase this type of definition, this type of introduction of the Pashtun people. 
each and every writer, if they had been terrorists, if they had been sectarians, then why the English writers write? Boarding and lodging in Pashtun Afghan land is no problem. Just go sit in a mosque, say I'm a stranger. Your lodging is free, your boarding is free. Mohan Lal writes it, English writes it, Chinese writes it, even Buddhists who visited their lands, they say they are good people, cooperative people. Yes, they were very much touchy. They were very much touchy in the past. They are still very much touchy about their sovereignty, about their independence, about their free life, which are positive and good qualities, qualities which must be supported. I tell you frankly, I'm a Pashtun and a practicing Muslim. I tell you with whatever honesty I have got on my command, to measure one's distance from a person on this basis that what is his color, on this basis what creed he belongs, on this basis from which continent he is, we Pashtuns, and particularly Pashtun Khamenei and Party, we consider it to be a sin. We are all human beings. We are the descendants of Eve and Adam. So we have to make this planet a beautiful planet. I think responsibility doesn't lie on the weaker nations, on us people. It comes to my friend Jones. They have to lead. They have to lead this, how to make this planet like a good village. Differences of opinion are there. So we should be. Secondly, Islam. Pashtuns, once more, here, your students from Pakistan, from various nationalities, various nations, till 1800, we must not forget history, till 1800, the Afghan land from Oxus to Indus was one and the same. All the Pashtuns now living on this side of the Dural line, round about having 150,000 square miles in different the Fata and the, the Khairbar Pashtunkhwa, the Pashtuns on this side of the Dural line in Punjab, Miawali and Atak, and the upper part of Baluchistan, which we call British Afghanistan, British Baluchistan. With the Arab, the mayor, 150,000 square miles. This was part of Afghanistan. The first, when the British Empire conquered the entire subcontinent, when they came to, to Indus, they decided to have legitimate ambassador contact with the Afghan homeland. So the person who was selected for this job was Stuart Alfinston. You are young people, you must read. You must make yourself knowledgeable. So he has written a book, The Kingdom of Kabul, in two volumes. Every student of Pakistan, particularly the Pashtun young, they must read it. It is a reference book. Stuart Alfinston presented his credentials to Afghan King Shah Shuja, I think in 1804 or 5, in Balai Sar Peshawar. Our governor Abbasi, son of this and this nation, Afghan. So we were Afghan, we are Afghan, now we are part of Pakistan. Terrorism. <laughs> Terrorism, we must be clear. Terrorism is not something which evolved from, from here. Terrorism, when Soviet Union Army got in to Afghanistan on December 1979, 78-79. So the entire globe, the entire globe formed a holy alliance under the text of that a mighty superpower has 
challenge the sovereignty of very tiny Afghans. So the sovereignty of Afghan Afghans have been challenged by a mighty power under the barrel of guns. So this must be protected. I think there had been an unwritten statement between the Afghans and this holy alliance. It included all religions, Christianity, Buddhist Japan, Jews, even communist China, they were part of this holy alliance. And the pretext was that the sovereignty of an independent nation has been challenged and occupied, must be, it must be repelled. So there was an unwritten statement, unwritten agreement between the Afghans and this alliance. They, I think they told them, we are not going to, be, to fight for your freedom. Otherwise, we will support you. The Afghans said, yes, that, that we will do it. My head, my body, and my commitment. So the Pashtuns, the Afghans, North Alliance, everybody, so many names are given. This fought, fight was going on. They fought valiantly, even our part of the world, even Fatah, everybody. They fought against the, the war which was between Warsaw and NATO. And unfortunately, that war was fought on our homeland. I think we owe, the Afghans owe, The entire world is in debt to the Afghan people. Soviet Union went this way, and the Holy Alliance went this way, and left the crippled, injured, and very brutally wounded Afghanistan to the terrorists. Who, is who, was responsible, who was responsible for it? America was the leader. America says that he, she has spent $7 billion in cash. They were that much committed that even Stinger missile, which were denied to Saudi Arabia under the pressure of Israel, but they were given to freedom fighter of Afghanistan. C Colonel Imam on Pakistan television said, yes, ISI was involved. ISI was given the drawing and dispersing powers of money and ammunition. Yes, it was given to them by this alliance. Colonel Imam says that we trained 90,000 people in the entire globe, including Arabs, Chechens, this, that, Uzbek, Tajik, Pashtuns, and other people. Ironically, I'm sorry to say, ironically, when you train somebody for, in a carpenter shop, you have a register. Mr. So-and-so can make good tables. Mr. So-and-so can make good uh, bed, bed, bed sheets. Mr. So-and-so can make these things. Unfortunately, no record was kept. Thousands of people were trained in lethal weapons to blow up bridges, to blow up everything, to blow up cities. And their native countries were not informed. That be, 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 beware of Mahmoud. He can blow up a bridge. Beware of this and that. He can blow this and that. And they were that much free in bringing people for this war. Ayman al Zawairi. Ayman al Zawairi, the wanted man by the entire world. Ayman al Zawairi, along with his friends, was in the prison of Egypt. In Cairo or something where, where he was condemned for killing Sadat. They were all released and brought here as holy warriors. Then these people 
Tora Bora, what thing happened? People, they just, they came, they were brought in to our part, or they came in. The question is, yes, God forbid, if there is fire here, we have the right to jump anywhere. In a house, in a room, in a security guard, everywhere, because we are in a hurry. Yes, people came there. The question is, how they are being made that much powerful, that they are challenging the authority of the, the, the government. How they became so much power, powerful that they are, they are keeping the entire fighter, the fighting people at bay. This is the question to be taken into account. My, we, I, Islam, not, not this book, Violent Politics, A History of Insurgency, Terrorism, and Guerrilla Warfare, written by William R. Polk. You must read it. This is written by a man who worked in the United States of America with CIA and other forces, right from Vietnam to the last thing. It is a very good book. There is no time to be uh, going to in detail. You must read it, young students. He has the American insurgency, the Spanish guerrilla against the French, the Philippine insurrection, the Irish struggle for independence, Tito and the Yugoslav partisans, the Greek resistance, Kenya and the Mau Mau, the Algerian War of National Independence, the Vietnamese struggle against the French, American takes over from France and Vietnam, the Afghan resistance to the British and the Russians. He has very, very minutely analyzed it. Being an American, he is of the opinion that this is very, very wrong to blame a full religion to be based on terrorism, Islam. This man says, I can't, I can't give you the details because the time is fleeting. I'm short of time. In Pakistan, one thing we say, we, the Pashtuns, we are not going to take lessons from anyone in Pakistan. Because we had been in the forefront. When the British came in, we were the people who resisted with guns. Each and every village, right from Swat and Waziristan, Bajawar, to South Waziristan, these people fight, fought valiantly. Even Sir Vincent Churchill came there as a lieutenant. And we have, and we have, and we have his Burj al Tashta. Yeah, it is there. So, in the, in the democratic struggle, we were in the forefront against each and every martial law. We were in the forefront of forming alliances. The generals were trying to have a constitution where the role of the military should be, sub, be commanding. Well, our approach is, and we will never compromise with anybody, our approach is, that Pakistan must have a parliament, a federation of five people, Pashtun, Baloch, Sindhi, Sraikis, Punjabis. Each and every people must have the constitutional guarantee on its resources. And each and every parliament, I mean provincial assembly and the national assembly, must be the origin of power. Foreign policies and interior policies must wait. Not record wrong, we had been opposed with Punjab, Punjab of the 50s and 60s. It's uh, judiciary, it's civil bureaucracy, it's military bureaucracy. They, they left nothing. But now we are hopeful in the leadership of Nawaz Sharif, a democratic Punjabi is coming out. And one thing is very, very, very positive that the entire judiciary, the media and the entire parliament, they are one and the same. And we are sure that the army under Sharif will come to this orbit. So we are, we are not against 
this against any kind of uh, opposition. But anybody who will, anybody, how powerful you may be, either from the military or civil inside, who will attack the sovereignty of parliament, will face our opposition, opposition of the hardest type. My time is, my time is finishing.